Then Adam rejoiced at Eve's deliverance, and also over the children she had borne him. And Adam ministered to Eve in the cave, until the end of eight days, when they named their son Cain, and the daughter Lulua. The meaning of Cain is hater, because he hated his sister in their mother's womb, before they came out of it. Therefore Adam named him Cain. But Lulua means beautiful, because she was more beautiful than her mother. Then Adam and Eve waited until Cain and his sister were forty days old, when Adam said to Eve, We will make an offering, and offer it up in behalf of our children. And Eve said, We will make one offering for the firstborn son, and then later we shall make one for the daughter. Chapter 75 The Family Revisits the Cave of Treasures Birth of Abel and Aklia then adam prepared an offering and he and eve offered it up for their children and brought it to the altar they had built at first and adam offered up the offering and asked god to accept his offering then god accepted adam's offering and sent a light from heaven that shone on the offering adam and his son drew near to the offering but eve and the daughter did not approach adam and his son were joyful as they came down from on the altar Adam and Eve waited until the daughter was eighty days old. Then Adam prepared an offering and took it to Eve and to the children. They went to the altar, where Adam offered it up, as he was accustomed, asking the Lord to accept his offering. And the Lord accepted the offering of Adam and Eve. Then Adam, Eve, and the children drew near together and came down from the mountain, rejoicing. But they returned not to the cave in which they were born, but came to the cave of treasures in order that the children should go around in it, and be blessed with the tokens brought from the garden. But after they had been blessed with these tokens, they went back to the cave in which they were born. However, before Eve had offered up the offering, Adam had taken her, and had gone with her to the river of water, in which they threw themselves at first, and there they washed themselves. Adam washed his body, and Eve hers also clean, after the suffering and distress that had come over them. But Adam and Eve, after washing themselves in the river of water, returned every night to the cave of treasures, where they prayed and were blessed, and then went back to their cave, where their children were born. Adam and Eve did this until the children had been weaned. After they were weaned, Adam made an offering for the souls of his children in addition to the three times every week he made an offering for them. When the children were weaned, Eve conceived again. And when her pregnancy came to term, she gave birth to another son and daughter. They named the son Abel and the daughter Aklia. Then at the end of forty days, Adam made an offering for the son, and at the end of eighty days, he made another offering for the daughter, and treated them as he had previously treated Cain and his sister Lulua. He brought them to the cave of treasures, where they received a blessing, and then returned to the cave where they were born. After these children were born, Eve stopped having children. Chapter 76 Cain becomes jealous of Abel because of his sisters. And the children began to grow stronger and taller, but Cain was hard-hearted, and ruled over his younger brother. Often when his father made an offering, Cain would remain behind and not go with them, to offer up. But, as to Abel, he had a meek heart, and was obedient to his father and mother. He frequently moved them to make an offering, because he loved it. He prayed and fasted a lot. Then came this sign to Abel. As he was coming into the cave of treasures, and saw the golden rods, the incense and myrrh, he asked his parents, Adam and Eve, to tell him about them, and asked, Where did you get these from? Then Adam told him all that had befallen them and Abel felt deeply about what his father told him. Furthermore, his father, Adam, told him of the works of God and of the garden. After hearing that, Abel remained behind after his father left, and stayed the whole of that night in the cave of treasures. And that night, while he was praying, Satan appeared to him under the figure of a man, who said to him, You have frequently moved your father into making offerings, fasting and praying, Therefore I will kill you, and make you perish from this world. But as for Abel, he prayed to God, and drove away Satan from him, and did not believe the words of the devil. Then when it was day, an angel of God appeared to him, who said to him, 
do not cut short either fasting, prayer, or offering up an offering to your God. For, look, the Lord had accepted your prayer. Be not afraid of the figure which appeared to you in the night, and who cursed you to death. And the angel departed from him. Then when it was day, Abel came to Adam and Eve, and told them of the vision he had seen. When they heard it, they grieved much over it, but said nothing to him about it. They only comforted him. But as to the hard-hearted Cain, Satan came to him by night, showed himself and said to him, Since Adam and Eve loved your brother Abel so much more than they loved you, they wish to join him in marriage to your beautiful sister because they love him. However, they wish to join you in marriage to his ugly sister because they hate you. Now before they do that, I'm telling you that you should kill your brother. That way your sister will be left for you, and his sister will be cast away. And Satan departed from him, but the devil remained behind in Cain's heart, and frequently aspired to kill his brother. Chapter 77 Cain, fifteen years old, and Abel, twelve years old, grow apart. But when Adam saw that... So I live in St. Louis. Carson lives in California. We're so distant and don't get to see each other. I miss my dad so much. How you doing, Car? Dad the older brother hated the younger. He endeavored to soften their hearts and said to Cain, Oh, my son, take of the fruits of your sowing and make an offering to God, so that he might forgive you for your wickedness and sin. He also said to Abel, Take some of your sowing and make an offering and bring it to God, so that he might forgive you for your wickedness and sin. Then Abel obeyed his father's voice, took some of his sowing, and made a good offering, and said to his father Adam, Come with me and show me how to offer it up. And they went, Adam and Eve, with him, and they showed him how to offer up his gift on the altar. Then after that, they stood up and prayed that God would accept Abel's offering. Then God looked at Abel and accepted his offering, and God was more pleased with Abel than with his offering, because of his good heart and pure body. There was no trace of guile in him. Then they came down from the altar and went to the cave in which they lived. But Abel, by reason of his joy at having made his offering, repeated it three times a week, after the example of his father Adam. But as to Cain, he did not want to make an offering, but after his father became very angry, he offered up a gift once. He took the smallest of his sheep for an offering, and when he offered it up, his eyes were on the lamb. Therefore God did not accept his offering, because his heart was full of murderous thoughts. And they all thus lived together in the cave in which Eve had brought forth, until Cain was fifteen years old, and Abel was twelve years old. Chapter 78. Jealousy Overcomes Cain. He Makes Trouble in the Family. How the First Murder Was Planned. Then Adam said to Eve, Behold, the children are grown up. We must think of finding wives for them. Then Eve answered, How can we do it? Then Adam said to her, We will join Abel's sister in marriage to Cain, and Cain's sister to Abel. Then said Eve to Adam, I do not like Cain because he is hard-hearted, but let them stay with us until we offer up to the Lord in their behalf. And Adam said no more. Meanwhile, Satan came to Cain in the figure of a man of the field, and said to him, Behold, Adam and Eve have taken counsel together about the marriage of you two, and they have agreed to marry Abel's sister to you and your sister to him. But if it was not that I love you, I would not have told you this thing. Yet if you will take my advice and obey me, I will bring you on your wedding day beautiful robes, gold and silver in plenty, and my relations will attend you. Then Cain said with joy, Where are your relations? And Satan answered, My relations are in the garden in the north, where I once meant to bring your father Adam, but he will not accept my offer. But you... If you will receive my words, and if you will come to me after your wedding, you shall rest from the misery in which you are, and you shall rest and be better off than your father Adam. At these words of Satan, Cain opened his ears and leaned towards his speech. And he did not remain in the field, but he went to Eve, his mother, and beat her, and cursed her, and said to her, Why are you planning to take my sister to wed her to my brother? 
am I dead? His mother, however, quieted him and sent him to the field where he had been. Then when Adam came, she told him of what Cain had done. But Adam grieved and held his peace and said not a word. Then on the next morning Adam said to Cain his son, Take of your sheep young and good and offer them up to God, and I will speak to your brother to make to his God an offering of corn. They both obeyed their father Adam, and they took their offerings and offered them up on the mountain by the altar. But Cain behaved haughtily towards his brother, and shoved him from the altar, and would not let him offer up his gift on the altar. But he offered his own on it, with a proud heart, full of guile and fraud. But as for Abel, he set up stones that were near at hand, and on that he offered up his gift with a humble heart and free from guile. Cain was then standing by the altar on which he had offered up his gift, and he cried to God to accept his offering, but God did not accept it from him, neither did a divine fire come down to consume his offering. But he remained standing over against the altar, out of humor and meanness, looking towards his brother Abel to see if God would accept his offering or not. And Abel prayed to God to accept his offering. Then a divine fire came down and consumed his offering. And God smelled the sweet savor of his offering, because Abel loved him and rejoiced in him. And because God was well pleased with him, he sent him an angel of light in the figure of a man who had partaken of his offering, because he had smelled the sweet savor of his offering, and they comforted Abel and strengthened his heart. But Cain was looking on all that took place at his brother's offering, and was angry because of it. Then he opened his mouth and blasphemed God, because he had not accepted his offering. But God said to Cain, Why do you look sad? Be righteous, that I may accept your offering. Not against me have you murmured, but against yourself. And God said this to Cain in rebuke, and because he abhorred him and his offering. And Cain came down from the altar, his color changed and with a sad face, and came to his father and mother and told them all that had befallen him. And Adam grieved much because God had not accepted Cain's offering. But Abel came down rejoicing and with a gladsome heart, and told his father and mother how God had accepted his offering. And they rejoiced at it and kissed his face. And Abel said to his father, Because Cain shoved me from the altar and would not allow me to offer my gift on it, I made an altar for myself and offered my gift on it. But when Adam heard this, he was very sorry, because it was the altar he had built at first, and on which he had offered his own gifts. As to Cain, he was so resentful and so angry that he went into the field, where Satan came to him and said to him, Since your brother Abel has taken refuge with your father Adam, because you shoved him from the altar, they have kissed his face, and they rejoice over him far more than over you. When Cain heard these words of Satan, he was filled with rage, and he let no one know. But he was laying wait to kill his brother, until he brought him into the cave, and then said to him, O oh, brother, the country is so beautiful, and there is such beautiful and pleasurable trees in it, and charming to look at. But brother, you have never been one day in the field to take your pleasure in that place. Today, O oh, my brother, I will very much wish you would come with me into the field to enjoy yourself and to bless our fields and our flocks. For you are righteous, and I love you very much, O my brother, but you have alienated yourself from me. Then Abel consented to go with his brother Cain into the field. But before going out, Cain said to Abel, Wait for me until I fetch a staff because of wild beasts. Then Abel stood waiting in his innocence, but Cain the forward fetched a staff and went out. And they began, Cain and his brother Abel, to walk in the way, Cain talking to him and comforting him, to make him forget everything. Chapter 79 A wicked plan is carried to a tragic conclusion. Cain is frightened. Am I my brother's keeper? The seven punishments. Peace is shattered. And so they went on, until they came to a lovely place, where there were no sheep. Then Abel said to Cain, Behold, my brother, we are tired from walking, for we see none of the trees, nor of the fruits, nor of the flourishing green plants, nor of the sheep, nor any of the things of which you told me. Where are those sheep of thine you told me to bless? 
Then Cain said to him, Come on, and you will see many beautiful things very soon, but go before me, until I catch up to you. Then went Abel forward, but Cain remained behind him. And Abel was walking in his innocence, without guile, not believing his brother would kill him. Then Cain, when he came up to him, comforted him with his talk, walking a little behind him. Then he ran up to him and beat him with the staff, blow after blow, until he was stunned. But when Abel fell down on the ground, seeing that his brother meant to kill him, he said to Cain, O oh, my brother, have pity on me. By the breast we have sucked, don't hit me. By the womb that bore us and that brought us into the world, don't beat me to death with that staff. If you will kill me, take one of these large stones and kill me outright. Then Cain, the hard-hearted and cruel murderer, took a large stone and beat his brother's head with it until his brains oozed out and he wallowed in his blood before him. And Cain repented not of what he had done. But the earth, when the blood of righteous Abel fell on it, trembled as it drank his blood, and would have destroyed Cain because of it. And the blood of Abel cried mysteriously to God, to avenge him of his murderer. Then Cain began at once to dig the ground wherein to lay his brother, for he was trembling from the fear that came over him, when he saw the earth tremble on his account. He then cast his brother into the pit he made, and covered him with dust, but the ground would not receive him, but it drew him up at once. Again Cain dug the ground and hid his brother in it, but again the ground threw him up on itself, until three times the ground thus threw up on itself the body of Abel. The muddy ground threw him up the first time, because he was not the first creation, and it threw him up the second time and would not receive him, because he was righteous and good, and was killed without a cause. And the ground threw him up the third time and would not receive him, that there might remain before his brother a witness against him. And so the earth mocked Cain, until the word of God came to him concerning his brother. Then was God angry and much displeased at Abel's death, and he thundered from heaven, and lightnings went before him. And the word of the Lord God came from heaven to Cain, and said to him, Where is Abel your brother? Then Cain answered with a proud heart and a gruff voice, How, O God, am I my brother's keeper? Then God said to Cain, Cursed be the earth that has drunk the blood of Abel your brother, and as for you, you will always be trembling and shaking, and this will be a mark on you, so that whoever finds you will kill you. But Cain cried because God had said those words to him, and Cain said to him, O oh God, whosoever finds me shall kill me, and I shall be blotted out from the face of the earth. Then God said to Cain, Whoever finds you will not kill you. Because before this, God had been saying to Cain, I shall put seven punishments on anyone that kills Cain. For as to the word of God to Cain, where is your brother? God set it in mercy for him to try and make him repent. For if Cain had repented at that time and had said, O oh God, forgive me my sin and the murder of my brother, God would then have forgiven him his sin. And as to God saying to Cain, Cursed be the ground that has drunk the blood of your brother. That also was God's mercy on Cain, for God did not curse him, but he cursed the ground, although it was not the ground that killed Abel, and committed a wicked sin. For it was fitting that the curse should fall on the murderer, yet in mercy did God so manage his thoughts, as that no one should know it, and turn away from Cain. And he said to him, Where is your brother? To which he answered, and said, I know not. Then the Creator said to him, Be trembling and quaking. Then Cain trembled and became terrified, and through this sign did God make him an example before all the creation, as the murderer of his brother. Also did God bring trembling and terror over him, that he might see the peace in which he was at first, and see also the trembling and terror that he endured at the last, so that he might humble himself before God, and repent of his sin, and seek the peace that he enjoyed at first. And in the word of God that said, I will put seven punishments on anyone who kills me, God was not seeking to kill him with the sword, but he sought to make him die of death. Until the time that he was delivered from his sin. And the seven punishments are the seven generations during which God awaited Cain for the murder of his brother. 
but as to Cain, ever since he had killed his brother, he could find no peace in any place, but went back to Adam and Eve, trembling, terrified, and defiled with blood. End of chapter 71 through 79 End of the first book of Adam and Eve, translated by Rutherford Hayes Platt.